So what makes all these elements different from one another? Well, we know that an atom is built up from particles called protons, neutrons and electrons. So different atoms have different numbers of protons, neutrons yeah, and electrons. So the most deadly poisons and the most explosive materials are all made up from the same particles but in different quantities? Exactly. And because of that, an atom can be totally described by just three things. Its chemical symbol, its mass number, and its atomic number. So these three things can tell us everything about the structure of an atom? Mm hmm How? Look, I'll show you. Let us start with the lightest element, hydrogen. Now, what's the symbol of hydrogen? Um, hydrogen's chemical symbol is H. That's right. Let's put the letter H on our chart. Now, let's take a look at the atomic number. This is important. The atomic number of an atom is the number of protons in the atom. So let's take a look at this hydrogen atom. How many protons do you see in the middle? Well, there's only one proton. So does that mean its atomic number is one? Yes. It's got one proton, which means its atomic number is one. This number always appears in the bottom left-hand corner of the elements panel in the periodic table. OK, so what does the mass number mean? The mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons in the atom's nucleus. But this atom hasn't got any neutrons in its nucleus. So what does that tell us about its mass number? I guess it tells us that this atom has a total of one proton and zero neutrons, which makes its mass number one? Yes, exactly. Its mass number... This number always appears on the top left-hand corner of the elements panel in the periodic table. So the atomic number and the mass number tell us how many protons and neutrons are in the atom's nucleus. But what about the number of electrons in an atom? You need to remember that in an atom, the number of electrons is always the same as the number of protons. Is that because electrons are negatively charged and protons are positively charged? So the charges are balanced in an atom? That's right. So the atomic number of an atom also tells us how many electrons are in an atom. And in this hydrogen atom? It's got one proton, so it's also got one electron. So, now can you see that the atomic number, mass number and chemical symbol can completely describe an atom? I'm getting the hang of this now, but can we go through it one more time? OK, but this time, let's make an atom. Over here we have our ingredients. Ah, our jars of particles. So what are we going to build? Mm, let's build helium first. Helium's atomic number is two. So what does that tell you? The atomic number is the number of protons in an atom. So helium has two protons in its nucleus. Right, let's get started. Two protons. Here we go. So far, so good. Next, we need to add some neutrons to complete the nucleus. How many do you think we need? We can work this out from the mass number. Mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons in an atom. Helium's mass number is four. Now, we know we've already got two protons, which means we must need two neutrons to make the mass number of four. Exactly. One, two neutrons. Let's try it. So we've just built a helium nucleus? Yep. Now, in order to complete the atom, we need to add the electrons. So, how many electrons do you think we need to add? In an atom, we have the same number of electrons as protons, so we need two. Two electrons coming up. Hey, it works. Two electrons in orbit. So we've just built a helium atom. Yep, and this helium atom belongs over... there. Can I have a go now? What can I build? OK. Next element in the periodic table, please. Um. No. It's an easy mistake to make, though. We're following the element's atomic number. Neon has an atomic number of 10, whilst helium has an atomic number of 2. 
So the next element will have an atomic number of three, mm -hmm. and that's lithium. Atomic number is the number of protons in an atom, so we'll need three of these. And the mass number of seven is the total number of protons and neutrons. We've already got three protons, so we'll need four neutrons to make a total of seven. That's it. You've just built a lithium nucleus. Now, to finish off the atom, we need some electrons. There's got to be the same number of electrons as protons, and we've already got three protons, so we need three electrons. Hey, I'm getting the hang of this. Whoa. What's going wrong with our electron shells? Or am I seeing double? Don't panic. That's supposed to happen. Electrons orbit the nucleus inside shells. However, the first shell can only contain two electrons. Any more than two electrons, they may need to go inside the second shell. So the third electron has a shell of its own? Yes, and that makes the atom very reactive. But we'll find out more about that later. So I've just built a lithium atom? Yep, you have. And it belongs over there. OK, so can we build something else? How about carbon? OK. Uh, where's carbon on the periodic tape? There, it's there. OK. Number is the number of protons in an atom. So we need six for carbon. So here we go. Two. Four. Six. And carbon's mass number is... 12, which means there's a total of 12 protons and neutrons in its nucleus. Yes, but we've already got six protons, so we only need six neutrons to make the total of 12. Would you like to do the honours? Hmm, certainly. One, two, three, four, five, six neutrons. So that's carbon's nucleus built. And now for the electrons. In an atom, the number of electrons is always the same as the number of protons. And we've got six protons. So we need six electrons. Shall we try three each? OK. Here's one. There's two. Remember, the first two electrons orbit around in the first electron shell. Here's the third electron. Aha! So it goes into the second electron shell. As does the fourth. And fifth. And sixth. Which completes our carbon atom. So that's carbon. A nucleus of six protons and six neutrons with six electrons orbiting round within two shells. So what would happen if we were to add a couple of extra neutrons to the atom's nucleus? Try it. Are you sure? Go on. Give it a go. Here's one. Here's two. So that's two extra neutrons inside the nucleus. Uh-oh. Why is it shaking like that? Have I broken it? You've turned the atom isotope. An iso what? An isotope. This is a different atomic form of carbon. So in an isotope, we've got extra neutrons in the nucleus. But everything else is the same. Exactly. And those extra neutrons make the isotope unstable. Unstable? So what's going to happen to it? It'll break down. Look. 